Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin, that's Jill. And hey, you're watching us live. Yeah, if you're not, you're listening to us after the fact, wherever we may be. So we're everywhere, Jill. You just can't get rid of us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> I'm um, always surprised when I just run through, uh, you type in and just start looking for like the shows you've done over time and it shows up in like search results and all that. And vanity yeah. searches for the shows that you're on or shows that you do. I'm like, huh, I didn't even know that was a podcasting feed aggregator. Okay, then I'll always go and check, make sure that it's right and all that. So I was talking in the pre-show. I do a thing, uh, interfacing Linux, always just trying to build a database of what is and what is not compatible with uh, audio interfaces for Linux, because we all know audio doesn't work under Linux, according to Windows users who pretend to run Linux on Twitter and tweet about uh, this. So I have a 1608 and... I get this thing. This is the most over-engineered piece of equipment I've ever disassembled, Jill. Mm, okay. <laughs> and what do you do? What do you do when you're disassembling something and you don't have a guide? You just start taking out screws. Oh, boy, you got to be careful with those screws. <laughs> and that's the only way to do it. It's not going to come apart any other way, right? You know, yeah. I don't have a manual for this. So I couldn't find a teardown for it. And like, oh, look, brave adventure. And you know you're going to take out some of the wrong screws and all that, but you're just conscious of it. And you get everything. I finally get everything. I get it disassembled. 28 screws to get the case off this thing. To give you wow. a comparison, like, make say this Moto 8828 MK3, it <laughs> probably has five. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> just, I mean, to their credit, over engineered, but, and I, I get a part. I do the filming for it because I wanted to get some shots of the internal DSP because this thing's got a fancy mixer built into it that we can use under Linux. And it's even got a GUI. I get everything, get it back together. It takes me another three hours to get this thing back together because it is the worst <laughs> curse of you got everything, but I couldn't get the case to slide back in correctly. And I'm fighting. Like I take it out of here. I go into the kitchen to sit down to have a think with it. And like get lights out. I'm listening. I finally figured out what was stopping it because you know you don't want to force anything back together. Get all that done, pack it up, put it in the box, put it in the storage room, and I'm like, well, maybe I'll get back around to you know I'll pull that out if somebody's got a question about it later on in a couple of years, which is handy to have these. Like, oh yeah, here, let's see if we can fix that together, and we get it up and working. Come back in here, go through the footage, I'm just kind of scrubbing through it, cutting out the parts that I want to put in the video. And I see, as I'm flipping it around, under a daughter board, on top of the motherboard, there's a ribbon cable that's only like 25% plugged in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it was good that you had the video footage to show you that. <laughs> was it, Jill? Was yeah, it? Because I was, was ready, I, I was ready to go to bed at that point. I was like, I'm tired. I've been at this. Yeah. I just want to get some sleep. And um, that lasted maybe an hour. Then I went and I got it and I took it back apart and mm, plugged it back in. So that's my adventure with 28 screws and oh back boy. again, a hobbit's tale. Yes. Of OCD. <laughs> it sounds also like a laptop surgery and I've performed that many times. I have to. With hundred screws. <laughs> really like somebody if I work on their laptop. Yeah. <laughs> A laptop is not something like I've replaced a couple of keyboards over the, like because of that reason, you know, there's yeah. a bazillion screws. Now, fortunately, these days, they're more and more common. Everything's just glued onto the board, so you can't do anything I'm like, well, what do I, how do I fix that? Oh, you take it out back and throw it and like light it on fire by a new one mm -hmm. because repairing things is getting more and more difficult. You know, what's clunky as laptops used to be, Jill, you could yeah. pretty much swap out every piece on them, you know, oh, like the true. main board. Yeah, you can even up update the, the upgrade the GPU. I've done that on some of my older laptops. And some of the, uh, yeah, they've tried that a couple yeah. of different ways of like, hey, we can do upgradable <laughs> graphics. And, but these days, yeah. look at a modern Mac MacBook. It's just like that little sliver at the top and the rest of its battery. All like, soldered. Uh, yeah, glued and soldered. Service mount stuff. <laughs> it's not a fun yeah. time. Unlike <laughs> what we do on Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah, so I I have been really, really, really enjoying Trackmania. In fact, I've been finding myself playing it more than any other game <laughs> of late. And we had we had some fun maps yesterday. They were challenging, 
but but you could get through them and uh, as long as you practice you you know as long as I practice all the maps I'll get faster at them <laughs> I tell myself that lie too yeah <laughs> yeah now last week Vin we had some doozies <laughs> so, we had some fun ones we have some yeah. fun ones <laughs> I got to sit back and make a mixtape each and every week of uh, puzzles that we try to get around. And on Tuesdays, we have a server. If you're a Twitch sub or patron, take advantage of it. You already got that sub. You're already a patron. You got access to our server. You can come in 24-7 anytime you want. But that's not the fun part. We have scheduled mm -hmm. events on Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesdays, we drop 14 new maps. And these are maps I've picked out. I'm always open. We have a Trek Media channel in our Discord for anybody because there's like 8,000 maps or you can make your own maps. And if you want to play them, hey, let me know. We'll drop them in. But yeah, it's real fun to get together Tuesday. And that's the first time mm -hmm. everybody gets a look at what I have in store for them. And then we can practice during the week, during our own time. And coming in on Friday, it just completely changes the game because we're not yeah, doing this really time does. attack stuff. We're all starting at the same time and we're trying to get through for points. And Yeah, and, and uh, maps that you usually, you know, had gotten through at a good time and, and finished without no problem all of a mm -hmm. sudden if you have a big big group of people and you get nervous because you're <laughs> you're trying to to win some games and prizes <laughs> it, it things change your anxiety level goes up <laughs> it completely flips the dynamic from yeah <laughs> you know racing on yourself you know just smashing over and over and over trying to get that top time to oh no it's a real race and it completely falls apart which yeah. is the entertaining part which is the mm -hmm. entertaining part. It sure is. And then sometimes the exact opposite. I find sometimes having a lot of people around all of a sudden on this on a map, I'll be focused and I'll be mm -hmm. be in, you know? And it, it, it goes back and forth from being distracted to being focused. <laughs> and I'm going to say each and every week, at least one person will win a map because they just slowed down. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's, you know, they consecutively came in third fourth or fifth but while we were trying to race around the map because we were not being very intelligent flying off and crashing they were completing the map and getting the points mm -hmm. so <laughs> it's an interesting interesting dynamic now <laughs> we were talking i know this is a strange thing but we were talking about ipads in the pre-show because apple's released yeah. you know the ipad whatever it is this M2. year yeah. And uh, it's got a DaVinci Resolve is available on it. I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat, right? But like, I'm not going to buy an iPad. I'm not going to spend like twelve, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 on an iPad. But we've never really had a iPad-like device, you know, a tablet on Linux that is really good. And we kind of wanted to like the uh, Pine tab. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it was a 720p screen and you just couldn't get a hold to them. Maybe we can do a little bit better. Maybe an x86 tablet from Juno. Yeah. Yeah. So Juno Computers, they're the sellers of Linux computers and laptops, has uh, branched out now and selling something lots of us in the Linux community have been waiting for, a Linux-powered tablet. And not just a Linux-powered tablet that's ARM-based. This one is x86 64-bit based. Woohoo! Very exciting. So this Juno tablet is now available for pre-order for $429 and up, and it can be configured with, of course, several different touch-friendly uh, mobile Linux distros. But keep in mind, this is a beta, and some of the hardware is not supported by software yet, but it, with uh, the help of uh, lots of Linux users and developers, I'm sure that will be fixed very soon. And so, yeah, the specs are uh, an x86, 64-bit Intel Jasper Lake processor, an Intel 4-core Celeron, 1920 by 1200 pixel IPS LCD touchscreen display, 8 gigs of LPDDR2133 uh, RAM, so the, that's sold, sold, soldered to the motherboard, 256 gig 512 gig and one terabyte storage options very nice and a slew of uh, usb 3.1 type c port there's one of those and there's one usb 3.0 type a port and a mini hdmi a micro sd card reader and a headphone jack thank you very much juno for the headphone jack 
And there's also support it, support for an optional pen with uh, 1,024 levels of pressure sensitivity, which is actually is available as a $22 add-on for the tablet. Actually, that's a really good price. And the Linux OS choices are Mobian, Monjero Plasma Mobile, and Monjero Fosh. So I, I'm pretty excited about this tablet. Me and Ven were talking about it. And it would be nice if it was a little lower in price, but it's it's still we need a Linux x86 tablet in you know in the community. <laughs> We've needed one desperately. <laughs> huh, Ven? Ven wants one. <laughs> I want one, but this is not going to be it. Um, mm -hmm. Couple of things with this. Like my first thought about this was, hey, this thing's using a Celly 5100, which is four core. Four thread, 1.1 gigahertz. That's a chip from 2021. I was kind of a stinker back then. And being x86, what's that mean? That means your battery life is not going to be that great. A uh, couple of things really stand out to me, though. A couple of things. Uh, you know, I need to see something other than 3D renders before I think about parting with money, especially when it says in bold on their website that this is a, you know, this is a developer beta but it's also non-refundable. So mm -hmm. if you get it, you can't get your money back if you don't like it. The only thing you can get is store credit. So you need to keep these things in mind. Uh, a lot of things are not working. Suspend and resume, they partially work. I mean, there's a, to their credit, there's a list of stuff of what works and what does not work. And uh, you can look at this added privacy feature though. The internal <laughs> yes, microphone <laughs> and rear camera don't work at all yet. So yeah. don't worry about anybody <laughs> listening. But it's also a plastic <laughs> body. It does yeah. have a kickstand, but like a plastic body, I'm like uh, I don't know about that. And mm -hmm. you know, as as to what Jill said, it's a little expensive for what it is. I don't know. Yeah. Um, that there's a lot of like uh with it. So I wish them the best of luck. But until we get, you know, three operating systems right now, the KDE Plasma and all that, just like just really doesn't work at all. The, the Mobin, Mobian? Uh, yeah, Mobian. The Debian one. It kind of yeah. works. So, yeah, long road ahead here. Long road ahead. Um, I think I might wait and just see what uh, anyone else comes up with. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be, it'll be nice to keep progress of, of the Juno computers, tablets, the, the, the journey they're going on. So... It, it's 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 really cool. <laughs> it's good to keep an eye because you got to remember that you know even System seventy six started life as you know just rebadging other people's OEM laptops. Yeah. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you can pretend they didn't, but that's what they did. Clevos, right? Yeah, Clevos. Yeah. So who knows? Who knows? Wish them the best of luck. Uh, something that got me a little bit excited is a new version of Adore. Mm hmm. Adore cool. has always released at a glacial pace. <laughs> you <laughs> yes. <laughs> might get a version every year and a half, two year ish. Sometimes <laughs> there's a couple more years in between that. But they're happy to tell you about Adore 7.0. It is out. One of the big things this go around, the big honking feature, is a little thing called clip launching. And clip launching, mm -hmm. that allows you to experiment with combinations of various loops and like one shot samples that you can automate. They have the forward, reverse, jump, and multi-jump automation bits in there. And Adore now packs an entire loop library. It's a, you don't have to worry about downloading it all at once, but you can download that to your system and you can just get a bunch of additional MIDI loops and stuff like that from online gigabytes oh. of stuff. Nice. Another thing I saw in there was mixer scenes, which is a neat idea. It's truly a neat idea because that's going to let you A-B test all of the plugins on one track. It'll save all your settings and you can say, okay, maybe I want to try this. I want to change this with the gate. Maybe I want to change this with the EQ, with the compression. And you can go back and forth, back and forth, and, you know, and just kind of drill that down. I think that's neat. Free sound login works once more. It is back from the dead after millions of years of not functioning. That login has been fixed. So good news there. I did update the build guide on linuxgamecast.com for the 6.0 version. Like one or two packages you had to edit, in, but it's all there. You can go find it. Just type in Adore on our web zone. And this one, codenamed None More Blink Than Frank, which, 
Those are lies. <laughs> those are that, that, that's disparaging lies, Frank. There isn't. Frank's the OG blink. Okay. Don't be like that. <laughs> He's our OG skeleton. <laughs> it's still using the WAF system to build. I don't think they're ever going to change that. And um, yeah, it's outdoor. It's, yeah. it's there if you want to play with it. I mean, it's a, the best open source DAW available. Like, period. Like, not just on Linux. I mean, if you're looking for a floss digital audio workstation, that's the way to go, as he says, yeah. running Reaper. <laughs> and I think it's cool that there are now official builds for Apple Silicon systems, like the M1 and the M2s. Very nice. Right? <laughs> you know, those have been in the works, you know, and I want to point out that Outdoor can run on Raspberry Pis as well. Yeah. It runs pretty decently. And being able to run it on Apple Silicon, which is another neat thing, being open source allows that type of portability too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Which is always good to see. Uh, pro tip, I don't think there's going to be too many people in our audience. You don't really want to, even though you can get outdoor for Windows, it's not really meant for it. It's not very stable on Windows. So do keep that in mind. And also don't flip out. I've seen people have absolute disconnects in the outdoor form. Why? They come from the Windows world, where mm -hmm. open source means one thing and one thing only. From the Windows perspective, I'm overgeneralizing, but only this much. And I'm holding <laughs> up a very, very small amount. In Windows land, open source means free. Free, yeah. That's it. <laughs> that, that's all that gets processed. It's not like, hey, a community effort to build something. Oh, this. It means I don't have to pay for it, right? Yeah, okay. So they get to uh, go download Audor. And you go click the download button and you're like, all right, how much would you like to pay for the pre-compiled binary? I mean, there's a bunch of options. You can do a one-time thing or you can do a monthly subscription. A little is a dollar too. And they flip right out, Joe. Yeah. They, they flip out. They get so angry. They go to the forums and like, this is illegal. You can't, it's supposed to be free. And they have to be reminded. Uh, like The days of freeware in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> it is completely free. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to explain to somebody like, no, the, the source code is available. You can just download yeah. it and build it yourself. It's <laughs> completely free. It's open source. That's not <laughs> like, no, that's not, that's not how the open source work. Open source free. Give me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man, there's no helping some of you. But then again, I <laughs> wouldn't try to build software under windows either. I've, I've said, I've just, I had my eyes glossed over a couple of times watching that tool chain get stuck together. Uh-huh, yes. <laughs> All right. Kernel 6.1, there's a new release Canada. It seems like just a couple of weeks ago I was compiling 6.0. Yeah, you were. That's because you were, Ben. Oh, I was? So, yeah, so Linus Torvalds, you know, he announced the first release candidate of Linux kernel 6.1, and it's ready for testers and early adopters who, you know, want to get a glimpse of what's about to be included in the final release. And the final release is actually expected in early or mid-December 2022. So expect more release candidates down the way. But the biggest deal with this version, the biggest new feature of Linux 6.1 is the merge of the Rust infrastructure co code but don't get too excited yet because it's only a very basic implementation of support for the Rust programming language. And as Linus Torvalds says, it is basically a Rust hello world. <laughs> so, uh, but that Rust is coming in the Linux kernel. It's just, it's, it's just being implemented very, very slowly and carefully. <laughs> <laughs> but gradually, and, one thing I saw Linus yeah. say earlier this week, he was like, quit turning in your homework assignments late because he gets ready for a merge window. And he made this comment on the mailing list. He was like, and I understand where people are coming from. You know, you want to make that merge window and you want to push everything in at the last minute. And he's like, I don't have time to review all this stuff at one time when you guys just pour mm. on me trying to sneak everything in at one time. He's like, be yeah. a little more responsible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so another, uh, there's some other vulnerabilities um, in Linux kernel 6.1 that have been fixed, including Linux's uh, Wi-Fi handling. And um, there's been uh, lots of vulnerabilities with that identified, and they will be, you know, fixed in, 
hopefully the very, very soon in the forthcoming kernel 6.1 stable. And another useful new patch will display the processor and core number and which socket it's in when there is a seg fault error in a program. This is kind of the one of the the first times we're we're seeing uh, oh identity of hardware issues in in the kernel, and it's going to give you a prompts for that. That's that's pretty cool, especially for uh, server side uses. And uh, this will be the, actually the last major Linux kernel release of the year, and it it will also be the next LTS long term support series, according to kernel develop developer Craig. Crow Hartman. So I, I'm really excited about this release. We have lots of big changes coming in the Linux kernel, and this is just the start. I just want them to get to an LTS. Yes. Give me a six series <laughs> LTS so I don't have to worry about it. And yeah. same with the mainline. Mm -hmm. A couple of things mm -hmm. I'm interested in seeing, especially in the Rust aspect, because this has been, you know, bits and bits, and I was always like hesitant. But my guy I keep track of TAC who does the firewire stack a also development mm -hmm. for all the firewire audio devices he's got a f entire project called firewire control services which gives you also mixer functionality for your firewire devices like out of the box you basically plug it in you go to also mixer and you're like oh look everything's there just like you would with the usb mixer that has that that's all done in rust pretty much everything i know about rust i've learned from having to tango with that for the past couple of years getting that into the kernel for a small subset of people, will be kind of huge. And I think especially for people looking to hold on to their multi-thousand dollar audio interfaces that they bought mm -hmm. six or seven years ago and <laughs> they're just not supported on anything anymore. Not just forget about it on Windows. Apple, if it's not an M2, if it's an x86 Apple, there's a, I think it was like $160 worth of adapters you can buy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to turn a FireWire signal and plug it into one of the um, Thunder Noodles, but... So, yeah, Thunderbolt. And, and even then, it's still kind of dodgy, and you got to wait for the manufacturers. Like, maybe they'll release some drivers for whatever OS, whatever it is. On Linux, you pretty much just plug them in, and you're kind of done. So, yeah, having that extra functionality. So that that is one thing I've kind of kept my eye on. I'm like, okay, Rust and the kernel makes sense since TAC is doing this in Rust. Yay. But also, LTS. Awesome. Give me that LTS so I can just build and forget and just leave, yeah. it on, <laughs> leave it on Jackbox and not have to worry about it. So we got uh, kind of a big, chunky slice of pie. Before I do yeah. that, I do want to thank each and everybody. Each and everybody. Yes, each and everybody Yay. out there supporting us on Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, helping us do what we do. We got a bunch of bonus uh, things for you to take advantage of, up to and including... Like, we got the entire version of this show. This is just like the little bit that you're getting. You get in the middle. No, it's the juicy bit. But we got the fun beginning, fun end, live and uncut series. That is there. Access to our Discord. A couple other things. If you want to come hang out with us for our live streams that we do with gaming, myself, Jordan, Pedro, and everybody else, you can do that as well. I'm going to be pushing out by the end of this week. You get to be a kind of a low-key producer on uh, stuff that I release. Mm -hmm. like, I push it out. I'm like, hey, everybody, take a look at this. Give me some feedback. <laughs> give me some thoughts. Give me some hints. Give me your suggestions. And I take them in, maybe change them. Usually it's like, then you made a typo. I'm like, yeah, I did. Thank you for catching that. And I'll fix the video and <laughs> render it. But I always get out a little bit early for everybody. I don't like putting stuff behind the paywall, but I don't mind a snack pig even myself. So thank you for your support. We do appreciate it. Now. Yeah. Love you all. <laughs> plugs are done yeah Never slice by <laughs> this week it's pretty Something much special. pine cones yeah very good Ben. <laughs> i like that pine cone reef <laughs> you know what i would I, nice. I would eat the pine cones because those are sliced almonds yeah <laughs> yes oh, oh yeah they are huh i didn't notice that it's kind of neat i was like yeah I'd, yummy yeah I'd, I'd do a drive-by nibble on that <laughs> Except maybe the uh, pine needles. <laughs> what do you? Well, I don't know. Those maybe look it, real. <laughs> only one way to find out, is it? Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> so big update 
for all the pine stuff uh they missed the last update last week but you know just irl stuff kind of took place with everybody over at pine 64 but they made up for it if i can get this youtube video to start playing so i have something in the background while i'm talking over it that'll be even better oh that would be nice <laughs> come on video i think i, I can right. here we go <laughs> <laughs> All right, so check this out. A couple of new things to play around with this week, and uh, you know, just in the future coming up, the O sixty four. Is that what they're calling it, Jill? Yeah, it's actually called the Ox sixty four. And as a uh, so from uh, now on, I will ever want to refer to it as the O sixty four. They they call it the. Uh, it's an ox, no bull. <laughs> It's, it's a, a joke. weird, it's an oddball little device. Now, it's reasonably inexpensive, too. Let me let me get down to this little guy here. This is <laughs> reasonably <a> expensive. <laughs> reasonably expensive. We're talking about six bucks to eight bucks. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's like the little thing that the Raspberry Pi makes. Form factor, yes. But here's where it gets like, huh. Because it's got a high-performance 64-bit RISC-V core. Like, oh, that's neat. It's also got yes. a high-performance 32-bit RISC-V core. Okay. And a low power RISC V core. I, hmm. People hmm. might be able to get up to something with that, especially in the six to eight dollar price range. I'm like, hmm, all right, maybe not exactly my cup of tea, but they got a bunch of them to sell, and that's something you can't really say about Raspberry Pi right now. Um, yeah. A couple other things. A couple other yeah. Yes, Joe. Well, I really love that it is. Um, there are two versions: the six and eight dollar version, and um, the $6 version is an embedded device, and uh, the $8 version is an SOC that you can run Linux on. <laughs> now, if you've ever tried to run... Pretty um, cool. <laughs> think you, you got to be you got to be in the right headspace for these, though, because you think like a Pi Zero, but slower. <laughs> so, Yeah. Well, this is this is actually a great competitor to the Raspberry Pi Pico, so in 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 uh, close to that pi price range. Oh and yeah, it's yeah. in the price range of like okay, fine, I'll <laughs> just buy one and see what it does. I mean, pretty much. Now, a uh, couple of other things though. Uh, the what was it? Oh, the Star sixty four. Did oh, you? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I thought that I'm was kind of neat. That, that yeah. now runs. Linux, which is mm -hmm. good. It's booting. It's doing all the thing. Star 64 had my attention and it's booting the AOCS Debian fork. Uh, they even have it running XFCE and the power VR, the GPU is doing acceleration with risk five. Yeah. Which is and like, the reason it's called star 64 is because of the star five chipset that it uses, which is the risk five chipset. So that well, that's sense. good. I mean, it's better yeah. than like, there was already a product <laughs> called like star 63 or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one has my attention, uh, especially when you get it up to a desktop, because that's kind of what I'm waiting on, not necessarily mm -hmm. to run a GUI on it, but I want something because they talked about, uh, we talked about it several months ago, the Quartz 64 development. Yeah. Board, like that big chonker with a PCI Express slot and the M.2. I'm like, oh, I want Ooh, one of those. But sweet. They yeah. only seeded them out to developers and rightfully so. You know, they want people to start writing the software ecosystem on that. And developers have had that for a minute, and they've got Linux up and running on and along with a OpenGL, you know, OpenGL ES, and but they don't have Vulkan quite yet. They do mention that in this announcement. That's kind of what I'm waiting on, or maybe something a little slower than that, because I want to play around with the Risk Five, but I also want to be able to do something with it. Yeah, I understand, but it is nice that you can, you know, get a hold of an Ox sixty four for six or eight dollars and just start playing with Risk. <laughs> That's nice, and putting Linux on it. <laughs> I mean, for a tinker device, yeah. Pos I mean, yeah, at that price, you might as well. I mean, there's the reason I have so not so many, but I have a couple of Pi Zeros is because, you know, they've ranged anywhere from like $9 to $15, right? Yeah. You don't even think about spending Very that true. kind of money. You're like, hey, I'm just going to buy one, <laughs> see one. You know, I have a Zero W2 that I've used once just to confirm that it worked. And yeah. Like, <laughs> it's there. So it's one of those type of things. You pick it up for that just in case project, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's been really interesting to see the Pine 64 uh, kind of just grow. Oh, it's it amazing. Now, right? Their ecosystem is just getting bigger and and better. And another cool thing happened is uh, the Infinitime 1.11 has been released for the Pine Time, 
which includes access to new external resources, two new watch faces, and many additions and improvements. I mean, there's been so much development on the Pine Time. I've been <laughs> really enjoying it um, and, you know, downloading a new image uh, every few months or so. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Lots of, lots of activity by the community on that one. And just in, in general with, with Pine, they're amazing people. I want to risk five equivalent of um, like a Raspberry Pi four. Yeah, I want something mm. like it gigs of RAM. Like, okay, yeah. That's my new <laughs> base standard right there. You get that two, four gig stuff. Just get it, get it away. I know it, I can get it. Well, you can get it. <laughs> could get eight like two or three years ago you could buy a raspberry pi 4 for like 70 bucks which it did and if i had known i would have bought four or five um that's what yeah. I, I would like to see pine 64 develop something like that with a rock chip something in that 60 to 70 dollar range well that kind of power you know like a mm -hmm. i like to call them almost desktop browsing replacement devices because you can almost get away comfortably running. Now, the Pine Times also a neat thing. I know a bunch of people bought the Pine Times because they were ridiculously inexpensive compared yeah. to other smartwatches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what Pine 64 has been really good at, like releasing yeah. solid devices to play around with and tinker with because we, you find yourself looking for something to do. Pine 64 has got a lot to do, especially if you got a smaller budget. You're like, yeah. I can buy this, I can buy this, and buy stuff I wish existed when I had a lot more time than I currently do. Yeah. <laughs> Aw. Well, I am just looking, I'm looking forward to a Pine Big Book Pro, that's, that's Risk Face. And what was really cool is I got to talk to Wu Cash. His name is spelled Lucas in the, in the article from Pine64 on, on Sunday. Um, on the other podcast I do, Destination Linux. It was a really good interview with him. And when I when I said, I want a risk-based <laughs> Pine book, he smiled. <laughs> he goes, yeah. I, I, he, he just smiled and nodded. <laughs> Did you ever stop to consider maybe he would just had gas? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <I'm... laughs> that was funny. Oh, <laughs> this is cool. But I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that they're all going in on uh, Risk Five. You know, the Open Risk standard, because you know, for 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 years since the '90s, I've been dreaming of an open risk world. You know, with a. a Loving and using my uh, Deck Alpha and the SunSpark systems and all the vintage computers that I collect, and it's nice to see that it's it's now in an open state that we can uh, develop on. It's really cool. Interesting <laughs> times, uh, and yeah, we've always wanted to play around with Risk. Um, yeah, I've been playing around with Risk since the '90s. Risk yeah. kept me employed throughout all yes, of the 2000s. Right. You know, <laughs> thank you. Um, Fujitsu with your Saber 2 architecture. And, um, yeah. you know, and I was talking to Jill like earlier. I, it was, I think it was the G5 CPU that I still had that Pegasus motherboard, which was a development board. Yeah. That was a non Apple cool. motherboard. And um, I don't, I'm not even going to tell you what I paid. Okay. Here's a good example. Mm -hmm. Here's the Power PC type stuff we want to play with. But how much do those boards cost, Jill? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like if you want to get a motherboard that'll run like an IBM power CPU, those things are eye wateringly oh, yeah. expensive. Yeah. But do you know what? They would be so cool to play with. However, if you don't want to take out a mortgage mm -hmm. on your home, Pine sixty four lets you do that. You know, you can get a hold of stuff. Now when it comes to a laptop, maybe. I think what we all secretly want, we we want something that kind of contends i know this is a huge ask and it's not going to happen anytime soon but i can still dream something that kind of on the level of like maybe the first m1 apple chip something that you could legitimately do everything that you currently do on your x86 box but be able to do it be at risk five or arm and that's mm -hmm. the future i want to live mm -hmm. in and i want that absolutely. form factor and a nice little tablet yeah absolutely and you know what? We really have the 
the Raspberry Pi ecosystem to thank for that, for all the development and on ARM is, has been huge growth because of the Raspberry Pi. So embedded yes. systems. Yeah. I mean, that that is the modern, I mean, you, you got to think like Raspberry Pi and everybody who's been doing these embedded boards, period. That's the modern day Heathkit. Mm. You know? Yeah, we, it really is. <laughs> I still have a Heathkit. <laughs> you, well, you got to think, I mean, From kids these <laughs> days, kids these days, and unfortunately, there's some like, because growing up like the C64, Specky, stuff like that. Those systems were small enough, even though it was still a big ass back in the day, you could really have a full understanding of the entire system. And you, just a modern PC, you're not going to be able to get your head around that. But when you yeah. when you get into, you can get into lower level, level stuff with your SBCs and like really understand how things work, which I think is a critical understanding. It's something you need as a foundation. It's not so high level as everything. Mm -hmm. It's not a, as abstracted as modern day PCs are. So I'm glad things like that exist. And they're cheap and they're affordable. Yes. So everybody keep up the awesome work. However, we got to run. Joe, mm -hmm. do we got any last words before I cue that music? Aw, keep those penguins marching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go spend the rest of the day uh, not buying a $500 <laughs> keyboard. That's my plan. Yeah, yeah. You want that editing keyboard for I don't want it. Okay, yes, I want it. <laughs> You know what? At five hundred dollars, Jill, it's a deal though. It used to be a thousand dollars. Oh gosh, I have one van. I have an avid. Wrong uh, credits. Oh well. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. I have an av avid uh, um, editing uh, keyboard from the '90s, and that thing was about three grand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just insane. <laughs> And here's our credits, Linux GameCast style. <laughs> I have Star no Wars idea. Style. Maybe I misspoke. <laughs> I'm curious. We'll look at it when it gets done running because, hey, there's still credits. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, specialized uh, keyboards like the Avid stuff. See, <laughs> can you tell I'm trying to justify buying one? At least you can use the DaVinci Resolve as a regular keyboard. Yeah. You know what, Ven? Look at it this way. It's going to pay off itself off. No, it's off. not. <laughs> yeah, it will. I can tell it myself. Will. See, I don't believe less for, like that. You got to, no. for all the time you spend editing, <laughs> all that time spent, just think of that as a few dollars every day that this, the, the new uh, editing keyboard will cost you. <laughs> Black magic. <laughs> you see, that's, that's the way you might process it. I would have to process is like, well, I have to start making a lot more videos in order to justify it. Which oh, I don't have time okay. For. <laughs> you don't have time, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us, beautiful people. Thank you for your support, and we will be back to see you next week. If you get a chance, come hang out with us. On, uh, yeah. I'm going to be back tomorrow with Jordan. Uh, we're going to be doing back for Brad, and Friday, Jill and I will be together hanging out with the rest of our filthy casuals, learning yeah. how to get around tracks and uh, yeah. coming up with brand new and interesting excuses as to the reasons we can't. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Love you all. <laughs> <laughs>